Fishery stock assessments involve estimating how many fish there are in the sea and then forecasting how many there may be in the future so that quotas can be set according to sustainability goals. In order to assess the status of fish populations, the species are first divided into discrete units called stocks, which are then used as the basis of stock assessment calculations. So where does one stock stop and another begin? To do a stock assessment, scientists first need to know where the fish live, and then a unit of stock is treated as being a geographically discrete group of fish that are found in a defined area. For example, haddock on the west coast of Scotland are defined to be a different stock to haddock in the Rockall area. When deciding on stock boundaries, the location of fishing grounds is a key piece of information used to identify where one stock ends and another begins, and this can be seen from vessel monitoring and landings data. Scientists also consider the migration patterns of fish and spawning grounds, as well as genetics in some cases. Stock assessments then assume that fish stay in a population for their whole life cycle and don't migrate from one stock to another. In reality, this is not always true, as fish don't stick to boundaries on maps, but it's often a good enough approximation. In some cases, these simple rules are challenged, as the stock boundaries don't always match the biology of the fish population. For example, in Scotland there are two stock assessment areas for cod, the North Sea and the West of Scotland. But cod in these two areas aren't separate biological populations, and the boundaries have instead been drawn in a way that is most practical for the management of the fisheries. So stock assessment boundaries are often hotly debated, but are drawn up using the best available evidence and in a way that makes sense to managers. Once a stock boundary is decided, scientists are faced with other big challenges. Fish distribution is patchy because they move about looking for food and places to spawn eggs. And fish can't be seen or counted directly. So how are fish stocks monitored? Observations of catch, fish biology and fish numbers are gathered for stocks directly from the fishing industry and by scientific research vessels, which can then be used to show how fish stocks have changed over time. And these observations can also be used in computer models to predict what will happen to fish stocks in years to come. Models pull together theory and observations. For example, weather forecasters use computer models to predict if it will be sunny or rainy tomorrow or next week using their knowledge of the physics of the air, coupled with a variety of weather observations such as temperature and humidity. But even the best models can't predict the weather with 100% accuracy, and the same applies with fishery stock assessments. So scientists will usually say they are 80 or 90% confident something will happen, but there will always be some error when predicting the future. Fisheries models are used to help describe the relationship between different observations and allow us to answer what-if questions, such as what will happen to the future numbers of mature spawning fish in the sea if catches go up or down by a certain amount. Scientists can then provide advice on quotas and other management measures to help ensure that the stocks are safeguarded for future generations. In summary, Stock assessment models transform complex observations from many different sources into an overall view of stock health, which can then be used to set fishery management measures in order to maintain sustainable fisheries.